Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll explore how to use Redis Cache in Spring Boot applications. So what is Redis? Redis is a remote directory server. It is very popular as in-memory data structure to store the data in remote directory servers. So it will store the data as a key value data structure. So Redis we can use as a database, cache and message broker. So in this session, we'll see how to use Redis as a cache in Spring Boot applications. Without further delay, let's get started. So first we'll see what are the advantages we'll get if you are using Redis Cache in your Spring Boot applications. So if you see in this diagram, so this is my application and this is the database. So if you want to store any data to the database, we need to perform these operations like card operations. Save, we need to save the data into the database. For the fetching operations, we need to do the get operations using HTTP get mapping. So here we are not using any cache mechanism if you are trying to retrieve the data from database multiple times. So in this case, so number of database operations calls will increase due to that one application performance will be impacted. Because whenever request coming from that application, it is directly talking with the database and will fetch the data from the database and it will show to that uh, client, right? To overcome this issue, we are dealing with cache mechanism. So if you see in this diagram, so application not directly communicating with the database. So first time it will fetch the information from the database and it will store into the cache and second time onwards it will fetch the information from the cache. So in this case, you no need to talk with the database each and every request is directly get the data from the cache. Cache will be there in our app in this case. So our application performance will also increase. Now we'll implement this use case in Spring Boot application. First, we'll create Spring Boot project from start.spring.io. So here group ID, I'm using Azetech artifact name. I am using spring hyphen redis hyphen cache so artifact name I am using spring hyphen data hyphen redis hyphen cache so package name I am using com dot azetech so here we need dependencies one is for web another one for Redis cache, Spring data, Redis. Another one is for we need to perform some card operations for JPI is required. And we are dealing this one with MySQL database. So MySQL driver is required. And finally, we can add the Lambda. So here we added five dependencies. Now we'll generate this project. Now we'll import this project into IntelliJ ID. So now application is loaded into that IntelliJ ID and if you see my palm.xml file so we are using data jpa and data redis and web mysql connector and lombok so apart from that we need one extra library so we need to add this spring boot starter cache we are using this one now we'll create package structure So here I'll create packages like entity repository service controller. So here we'll create one entity class like user. 
So in this entity, we'll define few properties. So in my entity, I have defined ID, name, email, and we are enable this one as annotation entity and table we are using users. And if this entity should implement serial, serializable because we need to perform save operation. Say at that time, this entity should implement the serializable. Otherwise, it will throw the exception. Next, we'll create repository. User repository interface extends JPA repository. Here we need to use user scum long. We need to mark annotation repository. This is stereotype repository whenever uh, Spring Boot is scans the, scan this class, so it will identify it is a repository class. Now we'll need to create the service. User service. I will add few methods inside the user service. Before that one, we need to mark this one as annotation service. So to save our time, so I have created few methods here one is for get user by id save user and delete user so i have created three methods one is for save one is for delete one is for retrieve now we'll create the controller for this user controller so i have created user controller so if you see here create user so it will expect an user object as an input and it will save user so here we are using user service from service again it will call to the repository same flow and same get user by id and delete user based on the id it will uh, get and based on the id it will delete so this is normal call operations now we'll apply cache mechanism on this so for that one first in the main class level we need to add one annotation so that annotation enable caching so this is the annotation we need to add in the main class to enable caching in spring boot application after that we need to use annotation catchable cache put cache evict we can use this annotation either controller or service. So I am using it service. So this is the Getty API. So we need to use cacheable annotations and we need to set value and key for this. So if you see, this is the value I'm added a cacheable and ID I'm passing. So what it will do, it will retrieve the data from first time based on the ID and it will set into the cache and second time onwards, it will fetch the data from the caching and the same way we need to apply cacheable put into save user and cacheable evict we need to use for delete user if you see this one so the uh, so if you see cache evict we have the cache put cache evict cache put and cacheable so cache evict will use for deleting the user. Once data is deleted from the database, it will update into the cache. If you are using cache put also, if data is inserted into the database, it will update into the cache. For that, we need to use these two annotations. So this is the cache put. I am using value as a users and key as a user dot id. So it will insert data into the database and updated into our cache and another one we need to use cache evict what it will do if data is deleted from the database it will delete into cache also okay so for that purpose we are using cache evict so here if you see cacheable cache put cache evict these are the three annotations we are using and one more annotation we are specified at the time of specified in the main class annotation cacheable caching we need to set our 
redish server related configurations into application dot properties so if you see there is nothing as of now so first i'll set the server properties server dot port equal to 9696 and i'll set my MySQL database properties first. After that, I'll set the Redis properties. So all these details. So we'll perform all these card operations in the MySQL database and we'll store into the cache. And second time onwards, it will use the cache mechanism to retrieve those values. So quickly add the database properties and uh, Redis properties into the application that properties. So here is my MySQL configuration properties. Schema, username, password and driver. And this is the Hibernate related properties. And here is the Redis configuration. So I am mentioning localhost, Redis port number and cache type Redis because we are working with Redis. Multiple caches are available, EH cache also. But in this example, we are dealing with Redis cache. First, before starting this application, we need to start this Redis server in our system. That we need to start this Spring Boot applications. So we need to make sure we need to install MySQL database and Redis server in your system. We'll quickly start Redis server. So from here, I will start Redis server. If you don't know how to start this Redis, already I have uploaded one video so here I explained you how to install Redis in your system you can go through this video you will get idea on that so quickly we will start Redis server so this is the exe file so now Redis server is started port number 6369 and after that we need to run one more exe file to see the to monitor all the operations whatever performing with cache okay so for that one we need to start redis cli so with this you can able to monitor whatever the operations we are going to perform with cache okay so how it will work i'll show you quickly so with this our setup is done now we'll start this spring boot application so before that one we can just check in the database this is my schema there is no table related to the users once we'll start this application so it will create the users table so because i'm using users table so we need to make sure this entity should implement serializable interface otherwise you cannot able to perform the save operation it will give the exception okay so now we'll start this application now if you see this tomcat 9696 yeah so tomcat server is started and the port number 9696 okay so also it is executed one query create table users now we can go to the database and just you can refresh now you are able to use a stable user id email and name okay now we'll perform the operations using postman so here is my postman first we'll go with post operation so 9696 is my port number and users is the api so if you go with this spring boot application quickly so here is the controller so here is the users and first one is create user and will pass user so user expecting id name email id is auto generated so i will pass name and email so for this one if you go with this service i am using cache put with this it will store data into the database and it will uh, set into the cache so for that one if you see that uh, cli id cli nothing is there will perform first operation from here see id one is inserted successfully in the database if you see this ready cli so it is inserted and it will set user one into the cache okay so now if you can see the database also you can just refresh and if you go to the user table and if you see user is inserted and like that you can insert one more entry you can use a AJ tech and i can use email is aj tech at gmail.com and you can insert this entry now id is to inserted if you see the cli again one more user is inserted also it is added into that cache 
now if you see the database second entry is also there now what we need to do if you see the locks also so here is our lock so two insert queries are generated now we'll try with get operation so i'm using user id is one when you hit this one so it is retrieve the data user id is one if you see the time it, it was taken 24 milliseconds and if you see the locks so see there is a no locks so why there is a no locks mean at the time of inserting itself it is storing the data into the cache if you see here so it is setted user one and user so user two that is the reason it is not performing any operation from the get okay second time also i executed but there is nothing is there in the log because it is not calling any database so whatever data is available from the cache it is fetching okay insert some data manually into the database for example id is one email is equal to aztech at gmail.com name is equal to aztech so i have inserted one entry into the database and i'll insert one more entry number two text at gmail.com another one is test so there are two entries are available into the database id number one and id number two and now we'll try to retrieve this so we have two entries in the database so now we will quickly start this application now we are not saving the data just we can uh, retrieve the data based on the id using cacheable we'll restart this application so after this uh, retrieve we will try with delete that is cache evict with the get we will use annotation cacheable So now application is started. Come to the postman and we can use the get operation. User ID one. You can try. Now we are able to retrieve user details. So if you see there is a select operation. So it is first time executed and if you see here also. So user ID one it is retrieved and it is set into the cache if you perform the same um, same operation in second time you can just observe this uh, query select operation is one time executed and if you insert try the same query one more time then if you come to the logs see here there is no sql query this query is created in previously if you see here you are using get operation from the redis cache so if you want confirmation you can just clear this logs and try one more time user id one okay insert you can hit this now you can see there is no logs but while coming to the cache there is one more entry for getting the user one but if you want to retrieve user two so first time it will retrieve the data from the database user two data is retrieved if you see the logs one sql query is written and if you see that cache now user 2 uh, also set it into the cache now if you perform same operation in second time second time so there is no sql query this is previous one and it is using get from the redis cache it is taken from this cache okay so this is you can use annotation cacheable and next annotation we need to try delete annotation cache we will use to delete so for that one you can go to the to postman you can try with the delete so i'm using user id is two you can perform this so item is deleted so if you see the database you can refresh user two is deleted if you see the cache so cache is deleted delete is performed so from the cache also this user two is deleted so like that you can use this three annotation cacheable cache put and cache evict I'll share you github link in the description you can go to that code and try to execute in your system you will get better understanding on this redis cache how to implement in the spring boot application i hope this video is helpful for you please like share and subscribe my channel